A few weeks ago, a video was posted to this channel where we reviewed the allegations levied against Wilbur Soot, with the numerous high-profile individuals in the community coming forward and supporting his accuser, Shelby. Little did anyone know at the time, though, that these accusations would result in a domino effect that led to the dirty laundry of multiple massive creators being aired in front of the World Wide Web. The most notable case among these involving the popular Minecraft YouTuber George Not Found, leading to the premature destruction of his career. So what happened? Well, as always, we'll have to rewind back a bit to answer that question. You see, similar to Wilbur's case, George's career skyrocketed due to his involvement in the Dream SMP. And unlike some of his peers, he stayed true to his roots and had maintained an active audience on YouTube and Twitch. He's also collaborated with large creators such as Mr. Beast, and is heavily associated with Dream himself, even living with him for an extended period of time. Things were going well until a recent controversy emerged that threatens to destroy everything he has worked so hard to build. It has also sparked a massive debate on the ethics of cancel culture and how easily misinformation can be spread. Today's story begins on March 9th, when the Twitch streamer Katie Bugs made a tweet saying that she was telling her story live, vaguely alluding that there was more to come, echoing the same event that happened against Mr. Soot weeks prior. Soon after Katie began the stream, she recounted a negative experience she had at a convention at the beginning of the summer of 2023. As the story goes, she and a few friends were invited to a small party at a large YouTuber's hotel room on two different occasions, though the more serious misconduct occurred on the second meetup. She claimed that despite being, quote, freshly 18 at the time, she was given alcohol and was sexually assaulted by another creator who was much older than her, vividly recounting her experience with very descriptive language. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. When we got to the hotel room, it was the creator, the girl was talking to, and his best friend. The two of them and the three of us. Not much happened that first night, just some drinking and talking at a table. The guy's friend had been passing flirts at me the entire night. But because he was the oldest in the room, we assumed he didn't know my age. Later that night, when I left, I received Instagram DMs from him. And in my Instagram bio, in bold, was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. According to Katie, the next time they met up with these said YouTubers, she and other friends had already been drinking after coming from a different party and were encouraged to consume even more alcohol when they arrived. After becoming heavily intoxicated, she eventually sat next to the creator who she had mentioned was flirting with her prior. It goes without saying that the person in question was, in fact, George Not Found, with the host being none other than his friend, Dream. Despite not explicitly stating her age beforehand, she claimed she admitted to everyone in the room during the drinking game she was not actually 21 yet. This combined with George messaging her on Instagram led her to believe he knew her age without a doubt. Keep in mind that the Minecraft creator was 26 at the time this took place. She then goes on to describe the assault itself, which she stated happened on the second night, with her abuser allegedly reaching under her shirt without consent. It was a little after that, when I had resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch, in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. The main narrative provided by Katie framed George as someone who took advantage of a drunk teenager. She also went into more detail about what happened after the alleged assault occurred. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. I was scared to leave or make a scene out of the embarrassment. I went to leave and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get in the elevator to prove it was broken. And then after a few minutes, he ended the night with a guess I'm going now. Katie talks about the aftermath and mentions that George would continue to flirt with her in messages for a bit after everything had happened, though this apparently did not lead to anything meaningful. While she initially considered herself lucky that she had been able to have an experience being surrounded by such large creators, the streamer claims she later came to realize how problematic the situation truly was, resulting in her eventually deciding to come forward with her story. Katie broke down crying on numerous occasions, seemingly traumatized by the events she recounted. 
Obviously, these accusations were incredibly serious, and naturally garnered a lot of attention from the broader online public who were always quick to pick up a dream controversy. Like with the Wilbur Soot story, George's name wasn't explicitly mentioned in the stream, but it didn't take long for people to piece together what had happened and who was involved based on the context of her story and the community she was involved in. When all of this was revealed against the beloved Minecraft creator, the public backlash was swift and severe, with many of George's fans instantly turning on him and supporting Katie's allegations. While it seems confusing at first as to why they so quickly turned their backs on their supposedly favorite creator, Keep in mind George Not Found's audience was primarily composed of stands. While they're more likely to support any endeavor people who are involved in that space do, their obsessive nature is a double-edged sword. For context of the type of culture he involved himself in, he was heavily criticized last year after making a joke during a charity livestream hosted in memory of their unfortunately deceased friend Technoblade. This is for George, charity, George. George, George of the Jungle. George, Come this on, is George. a charity event. Why don't you want to ruin it? That's what? cool, but I didn't do anything. It wasn't uh, me. George, come on, George, man. I'd really... Come on, man. While it could be argued that he was being immature and should have acted with more tact, others point out people mourn in weird ways and that the backlash to his behavior was unbalanced, with him apparently receiving a handful of threats from more unhinged fans in the SMP universe. This situation is a perfect example of how these stands react to controversy. Instead of waiting to hear both sides, they immediately jump onto whatever narrative they feel is morally justified, regardless of if there's nuance to be had or not. This point has been mentioned in several videos I've made regarding the Dream SMP members, and it almost feels repetitive to even mention it, but it's important to note nonetheless. Due to the highly publicized nature of the accusations levied against George, it wouldn't be long before he would respond. And before we get to that, let's give a brief word to our sponsor. I personally like the idea of every man having a cologne for themselves, but unfortunately it's an industry that's extremely complicated with you having to spend a ton of money often to just sample something. Which is where today's sponsor, Scentbird, comes into the picture. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try each month for just $17. That's a good value considering a lot of these fragrances can cost you $300 to $500 for a bottle. You don't have to invest a lot of money on designer fragrances if you try Scentbird. They offer affordable and flexible subscription plans. You can also skip or cancel your subscription at any time, making it hassle-free. And the process is extremely simple, with you just going onto the app every month and choosing what you want. Two fragrances that I just tried out that I personally like are Amber Molecule, which has a more earthy tone. And for a bit more of a citrus flair, I tried Zaffirano. Each one of these comes in a nice tiny little bottle to try out for 30 days before you commit to buying the full thing. And what's even better is if you use my promo code GAMER at checkout, you get 55% off your Scentbird order. That's only just a little over $7 for your first month, which is available in US and Canada. So again, use the coupon code GAMER at checkout and click the link in the description down below. In contrast to Dream, who continuously got into numerous Twitter feuds before finally dropping a response video to his allegations months after they were revealed, George opted instead to make a tweet flatly denying everything and claiming he would soon make a definitive response. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the replies were filled with detractors accusing him of being an abuser and taking Katie's word at face value despite no solid evidence being provided. While many expected him to abide by his word and respond that very same day, this did not happen. In the absence of an immediate response, many continued to hop on the bandwagon, and Katie herself would preemptively reply to his initial denial a couple days later, stating, We both know what happened. That's why I can't sleep at night without scrambling for screenshots to try and twist. That's why you're scared, because me and every creator knows the truth. I am not scared of you anymore. I've been waiting so long to say this, but you're a fucking coward. Goodbye for now. This brief time period of silence confused many, with onlookers wondering what was taking so long and what he could possibly have as evidence to prove his innocence. The wait would be over on March 11th, when he would officially respond to everything in a pre-recorded live stream he aired on his Twitch channel. He opens up by stating that monetization for the stream itself was turned off. He also mentions that he did not go live the day he originally stated because he wanted to give more solid of a response with all the evidence he could find, and word himself properly. After this, he begins to address Katie's story point by point with receipts. These five people, they're at an official VidCon after party, but Dream actually didn't 
want to hang out with them. He even suggested that they shouldn't come because he was he was assuming that they were they were having more fun where they were. They reassured him that that wasn't the case. They were bored and they wanted to they wanted him to come. Regarding her point about being uncomfortable about the age difference, he claimed that due to the context in which they met, he had no reason to believe she was under the age of 21. And also the people that came came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party and there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of 21 plus year olds hanging out. George also rebutted the claim she was uncomfortable with his flirting, specifically that she used her phone to escape the awkwardness of the encounter and the alleged assault that occurred soon after. He described the event much differently, claiming that she had given no indication of discomfort, often smiling, seemingly enjoying the time they were spending together. It's also important to note that he was not sober either. There was no sense of uncomfortability from her. She was laughing and playing with everyone. We were all actually sitting on the couch that was in the hotel room, playing this game on her phone. Me and Katie were at the far end of the couch and we were cuddling together. But I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we had been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around half an hour until I started moving my hand further up, and the way it's phrased just makes it seem like it happened pretty instantly and pretty quickly. I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. Towards the end, he went into the specifics of their conversations after that night, noting that they often joked with each other in these messages and had positive interactions for weeks afterward. He also made an important note that he never actually tried to meet up with her in person, and that no romantic connection had developed between the two or escalated beyond what had happened in their initial encounter noting he had not attempted to pursue anything after finding out about her age, and giving his reasoning as to why she may have come forward with her allegations in the first place. What I do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that completely despises me and my friend group. She obviously had told some of her friends about what happened. Now, when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends, they're obviously going to look on this Holy. All in all, George's response provided much needed context, and in addition, pointed out several contradictions in Katie's story. While the cancelled SMP member framed the entire scenario as a casual get-together amongst friends who had been playing drinking games, Katie had framed it as being incredibly predatory, which George outright denied. Despite providing a rather concise and detailed response, many of those who had been critical of the SMP member during the situation simply refused to budge, continuing to characterize him as an abuser. However, there is something interesting to note. If you look at the comments underneath the YouTube re-upload of the response, you'll notice that the vast majority of them are supportive of George, or at the very least understanding of the nuances of the situation. In contrast, many on Twitter continue to drag his name through the mud, with tweets garnering tens of thousands of likes. While there certainly was opposition, mainly from members of the commentary community who wished to see more evidence before making definitive judgments, they were in the minority, with the issue continuing to attract more and more attention. Katie herself was of course unimpressed with his narrative, and soon replied to all of his points in a lengthy Twitter post. In it, she argued against George's perspective, claiming that because she had been under the influence of alcohol and never gave explicit verbal consent, what he had done had violated her personal boundaries. In regards to him also being drunk, she stated that it was no excuse for allegedly sticking a hand up her shirt in a sexual manner. She goes over numerous other claims made by George, reaffirming that what he had done was wrong and that her side of the events was more accurate. One very important detail she debunked was his claim that he couldn't have possibly known about her age due to her supposedly wearing a wristband. This was revealed to actually be a picture of her friend's hands, and also went on to state that the VidCon party they had arrived from was 18 plus. In George's statement, he mentioned a friend he met in person for the first time at the gathering at Dream's apartment in order to give more context. In Katie's new statement, she claimed she didn't even know the person's name, and hadn't mentioned him because he had left. One very important thing to note is that she actually shows screenshots of the supposed message she was sent by this person, where he appears to be highlighting the age difference between the two. This combined with his messages sent to her over Instagram was, in her eyes, definitive proof that he was lying, knowing full well the age gap. 
She also recounted the story of her admitting she was 18 in a drinking game once again, saying he was absolutely present when it occurred. Towards the end, she makes the point that the reason her friend group dislikes George and his friends was exactly because of her situation, claiming that he was victim-blaming, and also stated that victims were often pressured to present evidence to support their claims instead of receiving the support they desperately need. While one would expect George to push back against this and explain things as he had done before, he made the baffling choice to concede to everything, making a tweet stating, Since reading Katie's newest post, my perspective on that night and my overall conclusion has massively changed as she introduced new information that I was not aware of at all before. I have much more I will say, but for now, Katie, I am sorry. I am so sorry. I really hope you can hear my words and try to understand that I did not have any bad intentions. That does not change the fact that you were hurt. I will be saying more soon. Suffice to say, numerous onlookers took this as an opportunity to characterize George as admitting to everything, with those who had initially been on his side watching confused from the sidelines as he completely destroyed his own defense for seemingly no reason. To make things even more outrageous, a friend of Katie's also stepped forward and posted a video calling George a disgusting person. Okay, I, I, my friend cried in my f***ing arms about this and you're on stream denying it all, denying the f***ing hurt that you caused to her. Isn't this like the, isn't this, you're supposed to do the, uh, I need one with no, with no lyrics. It was at this point that Dream would create a Twitter space discussing the allegations. Obviously, seeing as how George was a close friend of his, this entire situation was incredibly difficult for him, with him eventually breaking down crying. I think that he has stuff to say that he will. I don't know exactly what it will be or what he'll say. I love George. I think that he's been my best friend for a very long time. This didn't make the situation any better, and many were extremely critical of his move with some claiming Dream was making the entire ordeal about himself, with the question again arising as to why he continuously felt the need to insert himself into drama when it wasn't really needed. This seemed to be the end of the George Not Found saga. He was accused of sexual assault, rebutted those claims in a video, then when he received some pushback, instantly caved into the pressure and admitted he was in the wrong. That being said, there were numerous individuals that were at this point becoming skeptical of Katie's story. One notable instance of her side of events being called into question was when her friend Ghosty spoke up in her defense. Some noticed discrepancies in the accounts, with the YouTube commentator Kavos tweeting, Ghosty, Katie's friend, goes on to clarify even further. The second night, when the alleged sexual assault took place, they went to Dream's Hotel with George in its sober completely contradicting Katie. The whole story was painted by Katie as a drunk girl underage drinking, who went to a hotel room and were made to drink even more and forced to play drinking games. This completely changes the narrative Katie was trying to paint. She is just a complete false narrator at this point. Support for George's side began to gain traction, with many believing the entire ordeal to be blown way out of proportion, and that what had occurred did not constitute assault. One popular tweet that circulated at this time reads, 26-year-old cuddles with 18-year-old pretending to be a 21-year-old for an entire night and playfully tickles her stomach at one point. In what world does this sound like sexual assault to a normal person? While support for George was growing and cracks were forming in Katie's narrative, many people online still were running with the narrative that he was a self-admitted, horrible human being. While many expected him to simply disappear from the internet after this, it soon became apparent that that wasn't going to happen. On March 16th, George responded with a second upload, this time giving an even more exhaustive defense of himself. It opens up with him recanting his admittance to Katie's response. As he explains it, the reason he made this tweet was because of her inclusion of a message from his friend. However, this also led to a shocking revelation. What's up? So, there is a text that is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, I know that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. Can you kind of just talk me through your, like anything that you remember from essentially the entire event? I didn't really notice any, any like bad vibes or anything like that. It was a little playful, maybe a little flirty. Um, I noticed that you guys were just kind of like playing with each other and just like kind of cuddled up a little bit on the couch. So I was just 
It definitely didn't seem like she was, like, uncomfortable, you know? He also goes on to expand further regarding the cuddling that occurred between the two. I do think a lot of the cuddling was initiated by me, but some of it wasn't. I was also drunk, but my impression at the time was that it was very mutual. She also says that, quote, I didn't know cuddling was an invitation. I don't think just cuddling is an invitation for anything. I only brought the cuddling up because it's something that she didn't mention at all in her original stream. And again, it's something that I think people need to know about to understand my perspective fully. He does concede to some things. One aspect of the story he apologized for was the power imbalance between the two, and clarified that he hadn't perceived it that way at the time, believing they were all on equal terms and that his popularity on YouTube had not been a factor in her interactions with him considering her to simply be a friend. He also continued by addressing her criticism of his behavior, specifically her argument that he couldn't possibly have understood her consensual boundaries. Quote, you didn't know me, apparently you didn't even know my age, but you knew what I wanted. No, he assumed it's what I wanted because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? This is absolutely not how I think about this kind of situation at all. I would never think like that, and honestly, it's kind of an evil way to think about things. Just having the opinion that you can do anything because you're famous or whatever. And I never once remotely thought anything similar to that. And I don't really think you're wrong for assuming that I thought like this because obviously there are people out there that think like that, but that is not who I am at all. And I just really hope that you can understand that. He goes on to talk about how he wished he had been made aware of this issue beforehand, noticing that creators had begun distancing themselves from him. Retrospectively, he now understands that some of this shunning may have been a result of his involvement with Katie being spread behind the scenes, which he stated was not just an injustice to her experiences, but also disappointing as he was not even aware of there being an issue in the first place. Towards the end of the response, he began to delve into the age argument, talking about his perspective regarding the age gap between them and the underage drinking that had been taking place as well as the reason as to why he didn't realize she was 18. It is now mentioned that Katie wasn't actually the one that was wearing it and it was just someone else's hand. So in these texts, they say, this is a quote, Lusas 21 plus wristband, we have a strat. Now to explain what this strategy is, these wristbands are made in a way so that once they're put on, they cannot be taken off without breaking it. But clearly the security that gave the girls these bracelets didn't do a good enough job and didn't put it on tight enough. And this just shows that you can never be too careful and shouldn't make assumptions like I did. From Katie's statement, it kind of seems like she didn't believe that I didn't know she was 18 and kind of thinks I'm just being dishonest about it. She said that she had it in her bio and that I DM'd her, so she was very confident that I knew. For context, as you can see here in this screenshot, her age is actually in her display name on Instagram. So today I actually found out there are two different types of professional Instagram account. There's a creator account and a business account. And for some reason, Katie's account was a business account instead of a creator account. And weirdly enough, it actually turns out that business accounts don't display special characters from a username in the username that's displayed. And because her age and this smiley is a special character, it literally just didn't display it in her username at all. And you can actually see this in a picture that I sent to her during our messages that her age is not displayed in her name. While George did make several concessions and apologize for some of his behavior, he did so in a way that showed he was genuinely remorseful and also showed that the entire thing had been a massive miscommunication, while also debunking other points completely. All of this marked a definitive shift in public opinion. While George's response had been flawed, he now had a very solid defense. Many on Twitter continued to hammer home this point, but others still expressed skepticism. Nicholas DiOrio, who was also involved in the commentary community, created a tweet revising the entire situation. At the end, he concluded, I can't feel bad for this guy. He has unreal levels of dumb totally deserved this fallout, and his response ensures he will face a similar mob in the future. In addition to this, the YouTube community began to pick up on the story, with prominent creators such as Turkey Tom creating exhaustive deep dives into the allegations. Of course, this all resulted in onlookers awaiting Katie's response to George, which happened a few days later. On March 24th, Katie tweeted that she would be giving her final thoughts on the matter. In an hour-long broadcast, this time much angrier than she had been previously, this stream was honestly mostly just a rehash of everything that had been set up until this point, but one clip in particular stuck out. It is fucking sexual assault, okay? I'm not gonna apologize, say that it isn't sexual assault, that I'm not a sexual assault victim. The touching, 
that he is admitting has admitted to many times this touching that he admitted to not asking or getting my consent before he did he felt up my tits on a couch with other people there he stuck his hand up my shirt under my bra and felt up fondled whatever you want to say he felt up my tits while she had initially claimed that she had been assaulted because he put his hand under her shirt now she was outright accusing him of fondling her breasts which was a new fact that was never mentioned before. First it was, he held my waist. Then it was, he touched under my shirt. Now it's, he touched under my bra. This is vital information. Why has this story been changed so many times? While there were a number of people who thought Katie's story had changed too much for her to be credible, keep in mind that there was still a significant amount of pushback against this from those who still believed that George was guilty. One of the top replies to this initial tweet reads, The story isn't changing. More details are coming out. George himself admitted to putting his hand up her shirt. He did not clarify where, and that is exactly what she is doing. Still, it's clear that the opposition to the narrative has grown in time, with Kavos once again jumping in saying, George not found accuser Katie is back changing her story again because apparently George now felt up her tit. Seems like a really big detail to leave out of your first two attempts to paint George out to be a sexual assaulter. But still, glad to see her beat her sub count today. Larger creators also weighed in on the controversy, such as XQC and Asmongold, who took a much more sympathetic approach to George and giving their thoughts on the entire ordeal. Bro, this guy had his life ruined. This guy got literally photoshopped out of existence because he had the audacity to cuddle with a girl on a sofa. Society or people need to decide what is an adult, okay? Most people agree that you're an adult at 18. I think using, the, using terms like, oh, dude, you're like, you're currently grooming an 18 year old. I kind of disagree with that, that whole terminology. I think it's stupid. I think, I think it's, it's, it's dangerous language. I think it's fucking brain dead, to be honest. Fucking brain dead. However, it wasn't just these two streamers that weighed in on the controversy. As we've mentioned, this whole chain of events was sparked by Shubble's initial allegations against Wilbur Soot. Well, it seems that she also had some thoughts on the matter, making it clear that she stood with Katie. However, her phrasing led to criticism from numerous individuals, mostly within the YouTube space. I don't think it's ever okay. I don't think it's ever okay to mess with teenagers. That's what I think is so much worse. I feel this upsets me so much. They're so young. They're so young. And you're so f***ing old. What are you doing? You keep saying teenager, seemingly to obfuscate from the fact that she's an 18-year-old f***ing woman. Like, a girl that can consent. I get it if you want to say that 18 is young. I don't understand the constant infantilization of this woman. Like, yes, she was young. She was 18. This wouldn't be the end to the discussion, though, as Connor Eats Pants, another highly influential creator, would also jump in and give his thoughts on the matter, making some rather bold statements. It, it, it's the fact that it's gross, plus the fact that the audience that they've cultivated is like young girls. You have young girls watching you, and then you're going to go in your apology and then say, that like, oh, like I thought it was chill or like, oh, they were eight. Like you're 27. Like, can we st like, like what the f like they're, they're literally just turned 18. Like what, what are we even arguing about? This greatly angered Dream, who would go on to rant about his statement on one of his alternative Twitter accounts. Also, Connor eats pants. You parasocial f we were never friends. You don't even know me, and your last text to me were asking me if you could come to one of my concerts. Clearly you thought me and my friends were so bad behind the scenes. When I was falsely accused of grooming, you pretended that you weren't hanging with me, and just happened to be in a group picture with me. This has resulted in a widespread mockery of Dream, with many of Connor's fans going on the defensive and again framing him and his entire friend group as abusers. With the Discord once again destroying any semblance of nuance the situation had, with opinions regarding it seemingly split down the middle. Suffice to say, Katie's reputation has taken a massive hit due to this third response, with many taking issue with her tone and inconsistent narrative. It's essential to keep in mind victims often have trouble recollecting exact details and specifics. But in this specific instance, she and her friends have contradicted their own narratives several times, and people who were actually there had wildly different recollections of how things went down. 
This entire situation has been a messy ordeal that has undoubtedly resulted in more damage being done to all parties involved than good. It's unknown whether George will simply move on from this entire fiasco and continue making content as he usually does or disappear entirely. Him getting edited out of the Mr. Beast Feastables photo shoot shows clear damages resulting from this drama. And although many people are showing continued support for him and criticizing Katie's continued shifts in narrative, that doesn't mean he's escaped entirely unscathed. On YouTube, he's lost over 100,000 subscribers, and on Twitter, another 80,000. These numbers are considerably smaller than the losses faced by his peers when they went through similar accusations but are still significant nonetheless. Realistically, if he continues to create videos and stream without getting into any more major controversies, he will most likely be able to recover and leave the entire ordeal behind him. I'd like to give a final shout out to my sponsor Scentbird. Check them out in the description down below.